It's Monday. Good morning, Karen. Morning. Yes, it's definitely Monday because we're here on SPTV starting our day with all our wonderful SPT viewers and, of course, Richard, the voice from above in our ear. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. As Karen said, we've got Richard in the background keeping us on track. You've got the lovely Karen Wood, you've got me, you've got each other. What more could you want to start your day this fine, slightly overcast, but the clouds out there somewhere, Monday morning? <laughs> I don't know. So what have you been up to this uh, this weekend? I think there must be a project that you've got to tell us about. Yes, there is. I'm, I'm working on um, a custom designed and arranged room with big thanks to Mama Brown, who's letting me uh, take over an entire room in her house. Uh, to make a more specifically laid out custom room so people don't have to worry about seeing my bed and I don't have to worry about making it anymore uh, so um, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be broadcasting um, and joining everyone on SPTV from there from next week oh, I've got a very nice rustic style desk that, that yes. Mama Brown trapped me to for decorating her bedroom. Uh, so um, we, we've got that all set up and I'll be using that to create um, training videos, workshops and, of course, broadcasting to the SPTV family. Um, so it, I've been paying attention because obviously you went through your transition when you moved. Yes. And Richard yes. was giving you layout tips and guides and I've been making notes. And so <laughs> I will be applying them all. So I've got new cables. I've got um, I've got some nice equipment all lined up and, and some wonderful decorations. And Ooh. finally, finally, after 13 years, I'll be able to have my ornamental medieval sword hanging on the wall. Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah. I like that. Oh, as long as you don't use it, that's fine. <laughs> it, it, it wobbles when you hold it. It's one of those decorative uh, ones. Uh, but yeah. it's all very exciting. And so I've, uh, as well as having my own TikTok channel, and of course, let's not forget uh, the SPTV has its own TikTok channel, which is it doing very, very does. well. Thank you, everyone. Um, yes. I've I've started a new one separate to my own personal one because I've got jokes, I've got cooking, I've got uh, basically it's just little old me. So I've started a new specific one, um, which is called the continuity. Yes, I saw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I morning, knew she'd bring Brown. something up if she said something. <laughs> Good morning, you better mother. Better keep that room clean. Do you know what? I could. I bet she's been saying that to you for years, Nick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mum thing. I yes. I used to say it to my son as well. Tidy up your bedroom. It looks so mess. <laughs> See, it's it's Richard. You are absolutely right. There is nothing wrong with a floor drobe. Um... <laughs> floor drobe? Oh my goodness. Yeah, floor drobe. But oh, dear. Yeah. oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Pick them up. Floor drobe. Put them away. But you see, the thing is, I moved out and moved in with Nigel, and he's worse than mother. Um, you know, um, he, he's the kind of person who, if he noticed some sock bits on the floor at like three in the morning, he'd go downstairs and get the little Hoover and 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 wake you up cleaning them. He's that obsessive. I'm not joking. Oh, really? I'm not joking. Oh, um, yeah. at, at least mother waited until I was awake. Uh, but the. <laughs> But yes, so it's all very exciting, and I've decided to call. And and there's a, there is a reason um, I've decided to call it the continuity. Yeah, yeah. Mum was really really obsessed with my paperwork. Um, ah. she, she would come in when I was at school, and I'd have like a pile of paperwork on the desk, and she would straighten them up so that they were all kind of like stacked like a ream of paper comes delivered. Yes. Yes. and would make sure that they were equal distances on the edges from the corner of the desk. It was very obsessive. Um, but yes, I've called oh, it the continuity. A... I've called it the continuity. Yeah. Um, Gordon Higginson didn't used to say eternal progress as much as he used to say 
the continuity of life and there yeah. is more of a there is more of a message in the continuity of life because it's not just the continuity of the human soul it's not just the continuity of our existence in the form of energy it's the continuity of everything the continuity of learning the continuity of growing the continuity of development the continuity of not always getting it right and I think it's such an appropriate term and I loved it uh, and I always have since the first time I heard him use it so I've called my new project the continuity I like it I like that because it yeah it's just ongoing and ongoing and I think that's brilliant and that's what uh, <clears throat> and that's what spiritualism is is about the continuity of life it's about uh, learning and growing and progressing so yeah, I like Absolutely. that okay. And of course, the progression <laughs> of SPTV into TikTok is yeah. just exponentially, massively. Got seventeen hundred followers. Amazing morning, isn't that wonderful? And I, I personally love TikTok. Um, I think we do have to be careful. I was watching, um, I was watching a video yesterday, and I instantly thought of. Richard and his frustrations with, you know, when it comes to certain qualities within the TikTok spiritual community. Um, yes. And I don't actually count those individuals as being part of the community because they're just there taking advantage of the community. Um, and I was watching a video uh, by someone on something called spiritual psychosis. And mm -hmm. how certain types of worker um, are not actually representing our way of life very well. But also, they're not actually representing um, the truth of spirit and are just making people feel bad and worse without providing any evidence. You know, my guide says that you must do this. My guide says you must do that. Well, if anybody's actually spoken yeah. to their guides, they're encouraging us that we they would like us to, they wish us to, because we have that freedom of choice. We have free will. Absolutely. And we should, we, we are allowed to make mistakes. They would obviously want to guide us against them. But they, it, it is about developing a personal relationship. Um, mm -hmm. And there is a certain quarter that, that Richard's campaigning to do away with um, and yeah. not do away with in a negative way, but by showing a better way and getting really, really good media um, to promote themselves in a clear and concise way and work um, in those platforms so that we can show the world that there is a better way of doing things, a nicer way of doing things, and certainly a more beneficial to all way of doing things. And Definitely. so I, I watched this video and it was very, very interesting. And of course, it reminded me of all of the things that we've been talking about over the last number of weeks and months mm -hmm. about improving mm -hmm. Um, the way we are received, but also getting out there. And I think you have to be careful about, you know, relying on um, a medium's ability, depending on how number, how many numbers of followers you got, because you can get these follow trains. Yes. So even even yeah, yeah. Even if you've even if you've got those big numbers, you know, look at the mm. quality of the work. And and you can see by the quality of the work that Richard's doing with his daily videos, the what ifs, which we've got one coming up later on. We have. We um, have. That, that we can make a big difference to how we serve people. But that's just my opinion. I know, I know. And I'm okay. getting in trouble because we haven't <laughs> said hello yet. No, we haven't. And we love saying hello to all our lovely SPTV family. So let me start the day with. Hello to Kelly Rockett. Lovely to have you with us this morning. Here she is. Good morning, darling. Good morning. And Sam B's here. Um, and as Buzz would say to Infinity, I love. Morning, Crystal Rose. Nice to see you. Good Beautiful. morning to you. And Julie Burgoyne. Good morning as well. All the way up in Bonnie, Scotland. Hello, Mr. Payne. Nice to see you. I've already chatted to you this morning. <laughs> and Sue Bailey is here saying good morning. 
Hello, Ashley. Lovely to have you with us. Richard is the sheriff. <laughs> I like that. Excellent, okay. because okay. we do have an exclusive chat with Richard coming up in a moment. Um, <laughs> good morning, Clara. Oh, my God, Nick Brown, say it loud. Free will and take accountability. Love your words today. Well, you know, it's oh, it's the truth as I perceive it, mate. It is. Hello, Debbie Ogden. Oh, what a gorgeous little puppy you've got there. And Denise Porter Gardner, all the way from Boston, USA. Hello, Michelle Oliver. Nice to see you. And Gail Davis is with us too. Good morning along. Hello, Jim Tim. Oh, it's Nicholas Den here on my friend's Facebook. Love a card reading. Well, we'll see what we can do. And Eunice is tuning in with us along with Sky Bless. Hello, Stardust. Ooh, Stardust. And Natalie Walker's with us. And I love the sneeze on the cat's face. <laughs> Hello, Chrissy Wheatley. Lovely to have you. And Amanda Ward's with us too. Hello, Christine Davis. And we've got Jay Johnson tuning in from Facebook. Hello, Jane Jones from Facebook as well. And Shaz Ferry, who's going to be on with us soon. Definitely. Hello, Marjorie. Nice to see you from Pennsylvania. Excellent. And Sarah Tink Western. Good to see you. Hayley Watts, good morning. Good to see you. And Ricky Draper, welcome to the show. Definitely. Lovely, lovely. And believe it, absolutely, and believe it or not, welcome to everyone um, who's on. We 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 are we have kind of caught up, and we're we're kind of like a minute ahead of ourselves now, which is absolutely excellent. Makes a change, really. Um, we will talk about what you've been getting up to this week because we haven't yet, but we do have an exclusive, and I know it's something that everybody wants to hear about because um, everybody looks forward to hearing his honeyed tones anyway but please welcome to the show the man of the moment himself richard are you there no i'm not here <laughs> <laughs> good morning everybody i hope you good. are all well welcome along how are you dear i'm 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 doing really good actually this morning uh, i've had a good eight hours sleep which was unusual for wow. me um yes but I'm going to do a little plug here, if I may. I know she's not listening, um, but she she will be on your guest in a couple of weeks' time. And that is the uh, Christine Hicklin. Um, I, as you know, well, not everybody, but Nick and Karen knows I've been going through a few, a few things and I haven't been sleeping very well. And I went to an holistic fair not so long ago, met up with Shaz, who's, who's on today. She gave me a quick reading. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to get some healing Never done it before, apart from the lovely Brian Walker, but not properly. Just a quick hands on and off you went sort of thing. But I thought I'd do this time. Literally having that session. Never had it before. And I slept. I had this healing. The only thing I could think or anything I can remember is that it was black. And all I could see was my feet moving as in um, move on, walk away sort of thing. And the reading before that I had from Shaz was saying, let go sort of thing. And uh, so I think with that combined together, I'm not sure if I fell asleep on the bench. I'm not sure. Um, but when I came through, Christine, she touched on She warned me that she touched my shoulder to say, if the, after she asked my permission first for me to touch, if for her to touch me, um, to say that she's finished with her healing. And I was gone. I thought I fell asleep. She goes, no, your breathing just totally changed. Your whole aura changed. And from that day, I have slept nonstop. Wow. And so Brilliant. through my own experience, healing worked for me. I don't know if it works for anybody else, but I felt that energy. I, I was literally just out of it. And it was, yeah. it was needed, really, really needed. So if anybody is struggling with healing, uh, stress or whatever the case may be, do that. But anyway, that's not what I'm here for to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up, but there you go. We love digressing um, on this show, don't we? I, I, am, I am terrible at digression. When you watch my live shows on TikTok, I'm all over the place. I never I stick know. to it. 
You know what? I don't think we should call this Brighton Your Day anymore. I think we should call it the Monday Morning Digression. (laughs) (laughs) The Digression. But see, I can digress, but you two are not allowed. That's why I always pull you back up. (laughs) But anyway, the reason why I I am here is to give some either some good news or bad news, depends on how you look at it. It is regarding the SPD SPTV Divine Oracle Day. I still have not heard from the printers. I have contacted them and uh, that's wrong. I didn't hear from them. That's what I meant to say from a couple of weeks. I have heard from them on Friday. The downside is it's going to cost more money because the card pack is bigger. The box is bigger and the cards are a little bit more thicker. I went for 300 milligrams compared to the 300 trying to save costs. Now, this is my dilemma. I can either cancel the order and give everybody a refund, which they will receive within the next few days. Gosh, it's going to take me time to go through everything. Alternatively, we keep the pack as they are. And admittedly, as you all know, you cannot read the booklet. The text is far too small. Therefore, I am willing to, for those who purchased, to send them, or they can download, I should say, via the website, a PDF document which gives them full color and they can zoom in zoom out which gives the cards on there the descriptions and everything so it looks all lovely and pretty so you've got that option so for those who have purchased what i need to know obviously the majority wins those who would want their money back they can have their money back those who want to continue with the print run the cards are fine there's nothing wrong with the cards it's just the booklet is the issue, but you will have the opportunity to download the PDF so you can have it on your phone or wherever you want to use it. It is your choice. If the if those who say, I want my money back, if that becomes a majority, then everybody would get a refund. Otherwise, it would be literally, I'd be out of pocket. And that's what I, I can't do. So it's really everybody's choice really i will be putting a post up on facebook this afternoon explaining it a little bit more and a poll i don't know if they can do polls on facebook still i know they used to in groups but i'm not sure they can do it on a public page just to get everybody's feedback if you turn around and say yes we want it as is the printer has told me it can take up to 12 days uh, to get it all printed and, and delivered so you should get it at the beginning of may um Personally, I think we've waited far too long um, for these cards. It's just it should have been done quick. Speaking to Kate May, who's got who's working with the same printers, she's had exactly the same issues, uh, back and forth, and then not and then being ignored. She had her first booklet, and it wasn't right for her as well. They then obviously charged her additional money on top. And the frustrating thing is, when I did speak to them, I asked if the booklet was okay, and they told me I said yes, it's perfect cost me £60 to have the um, out, out of my own pocket, which I'm happy to pay for, to get the test print. And I was disgusted in how small the booklet was. So, yeah, so hence why it was all done, hence all the delays back and forth. So all I can do is apologise, but it's now over to you guys to what you want to do. Absolutely. I mean, speaking from me personally, and I don't know about everybody else, but all I can say is I'm so desperate to get my hands on those cards I'm not so concerned about the booklet, especially as you would be making a PDF uh, version of it. Um, um, You know, I would personally want the cards over the booklet. This is a really, really good question from Crystal Rose, though. How much more for the booklet? I think I would prefer a booklet. So once again, we all have our own, you know, wants and yeah. desires. Um, yes, it could be downloaded, but uh, as a book lover, I, I I do admit that there is something about holding a book. Um, but do do we know how much more it would be, and would that potentially be a third option in your poll, Richard, of refund as is or price increase? Uh, I haven't looked at the price increase, but at the moment, they're £25, including posted and packaging. And I'm subsidising the cost in to send it to like Australia, America, Canada, for those who've ordered it. Um, so SBTV is subsidising that costs. As I said, we're not making any profit. If I sat down, 
it's come at another £340 on top. But it may be only pounds on top. But it, it's the it's unfair to turn around and say someone, well, you've bought the car for £25. I need another fair three or four pound off you. Yeah. And it's like it just gets complicated. It's a pain in the backside. And I just don't want to do it. I don't have the time to do it. I just want to get these cards out or cancel the whole darn thing. That's that's it. They're the only options I'm given. So that's the two options. I'm with you, Nick. I just want the cards. Yes, and I'm quite happy to have the PDF booklet. I hardly ever read the booklets. With the I never, I, I never I, read. I, the... No, I just read them intuitively. Yeah. So um, I prefer, you know, and I'm, the booklets are fantastic, but and the, and the illustrations that Richard has done on um, on the on these TikTok and things like that, and on the app is wonderful, and and also the the wording about the cards, but. You know, I want to use them from a teaching point of view. So yeah. I'm going to get yeah. people to use them intuitively. So I'm quite happy with the PDF and I'm quite happy with the cards. And good thing with, yeah. Sorry, Karen. The good thing with the PDF is that it has a search facility. You can zoom yes. in, ah. zoom out. So you can type in, for example, card 22. And if it's got the total, let's say, um, air, if you type that in, it would go straight to that page. So mm -hmm. you're not turning the booklet over left Flip right and page center. all the time yeah but then saying that um which she must I, when i went up on saturday i met up with shaz and gary they actually they said they can actually read the booklet with the size font admittedly it was small as well for them but they could read enough they must have super zoomed eyes <laughs> because i can't read the dime i have to use a magnifying glass so well, what we should do is invest in a magnifying glass company before they get sent out <laughs> yeah. um, and make a, a make a bit of money back from that uh, it is it is of course as richard says your choice and he will be doing a post yeah. later on but um i i i, I personally i mean we we've always used those cards intuitively when we've been yes. working with them on the show and i do yeah. get that that people would prefer them it's my understanding though that you would still be getting the booklet it would just be small wouldn't it be right Richard? that's correct yeah the booklet is still included it's just <laughs> small print um they're not it's not the big print yeah. um and it's, it's exactly the same thing but if you got the pdf the only fear that i have and this is a big fear um when you get the pdf the cards are in there in full color and i'm scared that people will let's say for example nick you buy your pack you get it delivered you download a pdf you send that to i'm not saying you would but you then send that to someone who hasn't purchased a card and say well don't say nothing that gives yeah. you the opportunity then to print the card out onto card and cut them out and then yeah. it devalues and all the hard work and the people who have purchased it for someone who would say, you know what, I'm not going to spend that money. I'm just going to print this off myself. So-and-so has given me this, you know, Nick's passed it on to me. Yeah. And that's, that's the downside. And that, that I think those people who do that wouldn't be very nice people in my, in my eyes. No. Because all the, the love, the energy, the time and the patience from everyone involved. Yes. Uh, in, you know, concerned with this for someone to be come along and say, I want these cards, but I'm not going to buy it. I've got the PDF. I'll just print it out on card. Because most printers now would just say, yeah, I'll print it for you. You can mm. cut it out, send it to them. You know what I mean? And if you're a dab whiz with Photoshop or something, you can need to do a screen grab, go to your own printer, you know, from eBay or something like that, and say, hey, can I have these printed? And yeah, it's going to cost you this amount of money. You know, and that's, that's my big fear. Yeah, yeah I get anyway. that. I get that. But of course, you know those people would have never, you know, I would, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> no. it, you know, but that's just that me. But um, my mind. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I've just seen Neil. Said, yeah, yeah go on, is Karen. there any way yeah. you can get a copyright, Richard? They are copyrighted. Um, they uh, are. SBTV, yeah, SBTV, um, copyright and owned by me. Everything is owned right. by me. So the only thing isn't obviously is the music. Apart from that, all the videos, animations, graphics, it's, it's all my work. So if anybody copy duplicated, they're in for a big legal battle and they will lose. It's that simple. Yeah. And this is the thing, but it's also the rigmarole of going through that fight and finding out. And 
you know, I, I, I get that. I mean, it's it's relatively easy if you if you know what you're doing to get anything that you create intellectually yourself copyrighted at no cost. It's so so easy that so long as you have got an original dated proof, you're absolutely fine. It's just that it's that battle, isn't it, Richard? It's that having to deal with it all that's the yeah. Yeah, and thank you very much, Jessica. You can. Jessica has just said you can lock the PDF with a password. So you can open it, but you can't print it. Absolutely. Fantastic idea. Oh, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Jessica yes. Wynn, well done. Well yeah. done, Jessica. You well can done. also put a password on it, password on it to open it, and it can be two different passwords as well. Yeah. So only those. Oh. So, for example, if you if I said it to you, Karen, then you'll have your own unique password to open it. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. that may defeat some people doing it because it's still nothing stopping them doing print screen paste, copy paste into Word and then press print. So, yeah. So there's always ways around it. There is. But especially yeah. with me anyway. With my dab out and, and digging uh, out stuff. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, but not every, you know, not everybody is not everybody is, can handle right. things like that, Richard. Yeah. I mean I wouldn't even dream about doing that. It wouldn't cross my mind. Yeah. What another thing that across uh, across my mind is having a conversation, um, going back to the lovely, oh God, Matt and Kirsty Grogan on Saturday, yes. is that we could have the possibility, which I don't want to do. These are a limited edition pack, um, and only a hundred. So if I did do another pack, I could change it a little bit so everybody can have. The extra cost plus the booklet, but some of the cards will be different, so they will be exclusive. So there's that option as well. Um, but I could always team up with a larger company and say, look, this, these are my cards, these are the booklets. You do the yeah. distribution, do you do the printing, and do it that way. But then it, I think it loses the personality behind it, and that's what I don't want. Is a lot of time and energy being put into these cards, and it's not just me. The VIPs we sat there for hours going through all the cards getting feedback, doing research, and spending a lot of time where big corporations, they just grab hold of someone and say, oh, can you do this? It's like there's one person, I won't bring their name up. This individual has tons and tons of Oracle decks, and they're near enough all the same. It's just a few words are different, a few pictures are different, and they make an absolute fault. There's no personality, Radcliffe. Yeah. Um, and there's no personality in these cards, in my view, whatsoever. It's just a corporation making money off of people where well, these cards are different. They're personal. They're private. They mean something. They, they are unique. So that's... Oh, but anyway... gorgeous cards. They are gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and we know how much you've worked, you know, how hard you've yeah. worked, Richard. And, and, and it means a lot to all of us. Um, so we just have to see what... Yeah. Uh, family wants um yeah. family meeting isn't it you know, we have yeah. to, like a family meeting family um, conference, we, family <laughs> conference. Yeah. what should we do about the cards yeah. yeah so let's just see what the feedback is i'm hoping i'm team pdf yeah so you still get the cards you still have the box everything's still exactly the same so you get the cards the booklet the box the only difference would be is that you have to download the pdf document for a bigger version of the text because the booklet writing is far too small that's yeah. the only difference so you're still getting the cards you're still getting the booklet you're still getting the box but you also have an additional option to view and you can put the pdf on your phone so yeah. if you are somewhere and you've got the cards and you're shuffling the cards you turn one over you can just quickly go onto your, your phone with your pdf and then read it and you can zoom in zoom out because it's the, the downside, sorry, it, is when you when you printed the cards, you lost a lot of imagery. You lost a lot of symbols. By having the PDF document, you can zoom right in and you can then see the clarity of all the symbols, the images that I've put into it, where the print takes away, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, basically, it's like saying ebook. You know, you can have this ebook on your phone as yep. well as having this admittedly slightly small print book plus the cards. You know, so I, 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 
I don't know about everybody else. Like I said, I can only speak for myself, and obviously Karen's with me on this one. I just want the cards. I, I, yeah. I, want, I, I want to hold them. I want to play with them. I want to lay them out on the table. I want to turn them over and use them. I hope uh, you're talking about the cards here now, aren't you? God, that sounded bad. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, red, Nick. oh, that's I, not as I, bad. You were just talking about those cards, Nick, and I was actually thinking <laughs> the PDF would be fantastic from a teaching point of view. Yes, it was. I'm thinking I could share the screen with yes. my students so we could work with the cards. So I'm thinking, you know, that would be a good aspect because I sometimes I'm, I tell say to students, Bring a pack of cards in, and we're going to be working with cards on this session. From this point of view, all you teachers out there, um, you could use the cards from a teacher. Everybody has the same deck. Yeah. So. Jessica Wynn, well done again. Yeah. With the mark yeah. the images. Yeah, I, I, that is Jessica. a good idea. Yeah. And yeah, it would take well, obviously a bit of work um, for Jessica me to go in Wynn, there and put it on. You may well have just saved the day. Yeah. That is a really good idea. That is a really, re I know it, like, like Richard said, it would take a little bit more work, but hey, at least you know your intellectual property is yeah. protected and you can, you can do a, you could do an inverse um, embossed layer of the SPTV logo with a yeah. no fill background. And then it wouldn't interfere with the image, but it would interfere with it in the ways of, people wanting to use them for their own ends um yeah. sorry i just sorry karen i just went photoshop speak with richard for a second yeah i know yeah i can do that but, but yeah that that would make an absolutely great yeah. workaround for that that jessica you're amazing well done yeah yes she's on the ball today thank yeah. you jessica it's much yes. appreciated right. and this Moving ladies on. and gentlemen is what nick and nick and richard are like techie talking and this is <laughs> behind the scenes this is what i have to put up with behind the scenes and i sit there and i smile and i pretend that we I bring you in we explain what it is we do we do <laughs> so moving on very briefly um because obviously we'll get to the show and get on with the readings and do all the other because obviously we've been chatting far too long um not my fault of course it's theirs they spoke yeah. far too much all right so anyway <laughs> um you, you mentioned earlier on about um tiktok and all the fakes and frauds out there now as as you rightly said that I've, I've got a bit in my bonnet about that and i'm on a crusade luckily um yesterday i was watching a another tiktok user she has 30 odd thousand followers um and we were chatting and we are going to be hopefully in the future we've just got to finalize things collaborating together and hopefully bringing in other well-known mediums on TikTok, not well-known mediums in the industry because they're gone, in my view. They're just not interested. Anyway, moving on very swiftly. Um, those who are on TikTok with a huge following, um, I've approached some of them as well. So I approached as in I sent emails to them, asking if we can get together as a team and start. We can't name and shame. But what we can do in every one of our lives is to warn people against going on sites that ask for money on their screens, giving people readings on their screens. As an example, very briefly, because I know I've mentioned this on the TikTok lives, I went on one live and there was this lady who was shuffling the cards so fast and speaking so fast, she asked five pound for a reading. She had her paypal address at the top and people were paying her five pound for a quick card turnover she pulled the card read the description at the bottom and that was it moved on to the next person that's all she did i went on to another page and this woman was charging 10 pound for two questions and the woman asked will she fall pregnant this year the woman's response was no the second question will i still be with my partner at the end of this year because of that her response was no, and then moved on. No, no support, no nothing. I had to speak up and say, you're completely out of order. You possibly have ruined that person's life. Emotion. I then told her to come over to my page. Luckily, she did um, onto SBTV. And then obviously I was blocked and banned from her page. 
I went on to another man. I'm not going to mention his name, but he did have a beard. And he was charging £50 for five cards. And he was only doing 10 readings in that space while he was live. And that's all he was doing. And I sat there for 40 minutes and he did not give one reading to anyone. But he was happy to take their £50 off of them. And the following day I was watching him. He was charging £30 for five cards. And yet again, it did exactly the same thing. No readings, just kept taking their money. And there's a few on there. So the idea, I'm hoping these people who I've contacted with, with me, SBTV, would come together and hopefully start saying to people, as soon as you go onto a TikTok page and you see someone asking for money, leave. We understand people do it. Some people do it for a living and they need, they need the income. If they are genuine people, they will not be asking for money. They will offer free readings in the hope and then turn around and say, if that helps or if you're more in-depth reading, contact me. I would do a private one-to-one, -one, but there is a small fee for my energy, for my time. That is fine. I have no problems with that whatsoever. It's those who are fraudulent. It makes us look really bad. And it causes problems on TikTok. And I think we need to start standing up to these people as a group of people who believe in helping one another to start standing up and saying enough is enough. The SNU or any other body out there, don't do it. They just put their heads down and let them everybody else get on with it. And there's no one standing up. And it is causing more damage than good. And we are getting a bad reputation. And it's not just us in the industry. You've got mechanics, the worst. The MPs, even worse. And then you've got plumbers, electricians. Everybody has someone, a builder, you know, have someone within their genre who are con artists. We just need to be a bit more vigilant. We need to be a bit more careful and start sharing, saying, don't go to this page. Don't go to that medium. The more we do that, the more we can stand up against fraud. And that's it. Enough said for me now. I'll let you get on with the show. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. You know, I have to, I, 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 know, I, I know I have very, very strong feelings about this. I will say nothing has changed in the terms that, this has always happened in one way, shape or form um, yeah. to the extent that they are just making these are the same people making use of new ways of working, just as we have made use of a new way of working by coming online and doing shows like this, doing meetings, mediums who are genuine, who are on TikTok. You know, when I first went onto TikTok, I was getting all of that plethora and then I rolled across one channel where there was this bloke and his wife and they were literally doing the good thing in the way that what you was just describing Richard they were saying okay this is our free hour we're going to get through as many people as we can if you like what you see there's a link down below you can go onto our diary and book a private reading we're only a tenner for half an hour and you know what I loved them but they had very very few followers at at the time because they were relatively new but their work was brilliant and so there are shining gems and there are diamonds out there in the rough and it's them that we need to be supporting as well as calling out the negative ones one i i, I, I know rich uh, i know karen you are on the e eldc i am and i yeah. used to be as well yeah. One and, and some of the things that, that, that get done in the background aren't always particularly shouted about. And I think yeah. that needs to change because one of the proudest moments when I was on the ELDC, when I was a member of that organization, was we had reports of a healer who was registered to us as an organization at the time, obviously, I'd say. Of, um, and they were charging £500 for healing. And wow. one of the proudest moments in my time on that ELDC was that we not only revoked their certification, but we also put the word around to every other healing organization that was out there saying, this person does not follow best practice. And I believe we managed to squeeze that person out. But those moments sadly are rare um, in comparison to the amount of, quite frankly, 
painful dirge that we get subjected to by these people who are wanting to take the pee out of our way of life, to take your money, to take your hope, to take your upliftment. And anyone who works with the world of spirit would absolutely, absolutely, absolutely want to work for the benefit of others. Leslie Manning, Manning has made a really, really good point, and I want to make a comment on this. Yeah, me too. Though I agree to our fraud, we have to be very careful to say, uh, don't go to a particular person because it could be that person has a vendetta against the medium. Do you know what I always say? Look at their work and judge for yourself yeah. with an open, clear mind. Don't be, you know, don't don't be dazzled by the glitz. Don't be dazzled by the graphics. Don't be dazzled by the, the shine that they put on any. Look, you really can polish a turd. It looks like a Malteser, but it don't taste as sweet. And you can only tell by looking at it that it's not going to be nice. And frankly, there are a lot of them out there like that. But you will see by the quality of their work. Richard always vets the mediums that come on this channel. I remember getting grilled and vetted by Richard, and he cares about you getting the decent mediums. And he has a wide different range and varied ways of working. But when it is out there, it's exactly the same as what we used to say before the internet in spiritualist churches, because believe it or not, I do remember those days. Word of mouth. Oh, no. Go I was and just sing about, for yeah. yourself. I was because... just about to say that. I was just about to say that, Nick, because do you, do you know what? Um, I get a lot of my readings from word of mouth, or yeah. people come back, or they recommend, or they recommend. And I know, um, and I think there was a previous comment somebody put it's it's not fair that these people are taking advantage of people when yeah. they're grieving. But when you're grieving and you're reaching out, sometimes you don't think about picking the phone up, sort of saying, oh, you so-and-so went to a medium. Who did you go and see? Because you need something instant. But there are a lot of people that have walked the walk um, and talked the talk for many, many years and have done their time apprenticeship in churches. And I say to anybody, yes, um, you know, this is a wonderful. This is a wonderful portal for, um, you know, giving good quality readings. And and trust me, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't be involved in it if I if I if, if I didn't agree with it. If I didn't stand behind it. And I've always been the one for going to the church, but now I think we've got we provide a bridge. There's a bridge because some people don't want to go to the church, and sadly, the churches are suffering. So I yes. because there's not many people that um, that are going to churches now, and this worries me as a as a church medium, and I'm sure it worries you as a president of a church, Nick, because um, you know you've got to get recommendations, you've got to use your own intuition, you've got to watch people on on uh, online before you actually part with your money, um, you know, send For a me. message to any of us you know and uh, and we'll help you um yeah we're, absolutely you know, we're going back to what you just said there Karen, about watching people that's what i like here on sbtv not just on other platforms as well that you can sit you can watch and then you can get your own judgment on the individual and it's the same as tiktok that you they give you the opportunity to watch the live without going into the page yes. watch it for as long as you need to to think, is this genuine? Is this right? How is that person representing themselves? And when he's, he's medium swearing or um, vaping or whatever they're doing, um, and it's not a community, it's more about them, give us your money, give us your money, that's when you should say, I'm out, I'm off, I'm going, I'm not interested. And that's the thing that people should be doing. So just And word of mouth is an amazing thing as well, if it's recommended by certain people as well. And for me, if you can go and watch like we do here, and admittedly, we've had a few people on SBTV that slipped through the net. Um, it's quickly realised and they're not back again. I'm not yeah. just saying that to you, excuse just that people haven't warned yeah. or they're too busy or whatever the case it may does. be. Yeah. We have lives. But we should respect everybody with their beliefs as well. 
and going back to what Ashley just said about yes, the, the religion there, um, it, it is sad, and I do bring it up in the show that spiritualism, and I know they got rid of the Witches Act. I sometimes wish they didn't, <laughs> because you can then turn around and say this person's a witch, <laughs> even though they're not. But you understand what I mean. Is yeah. I know they come under the Consumer Act now, but there is no protection. And that's the problem. But whatever you do, the government would they twist it. So if the government turned around and said you have to be registered with a company like the SNU or something, so if something goes wrong, you're struck off, like an electrician, like a plumber, you know, like a gas fitter, and they have to make sure their certificates are done. Uh, but then greed would come into it, and then people wouldn't call them staff mediums anymore. They would give them a sensitive reader or a psychic reader. So no matter what you do, they would twist it, they'd turn it, and it just can't catch it. But the genuine mediums, like you said, going to church who help out is dwindling. You know, I went to church on Saturday. I think there's 12 people. Then I thought, geez, when I was a little bit younger, so not that old, you know, and you go into church, it used to be packed. It'd be 30, yes. 40 yeah, people in absolutely. there. And absolutely. to be fair, going to a church was exactly the same as, as what we do here and, really good mediums who do do online is go and see a cheap or free sample like go pay three quid to go in and see a medium work have a good night with some friends you know and then see how they work and if they resonate with you and what then you could say do you have a card do you do private readings and and that was the word of mouth and that was the yeah. check balance and it's even yeah. cheaper now if you're watching them work online and as clara said do that for mentors as well as mediums i love what ashley has said and i'm completely with you richard i will just say that it was the middle ground because we ditched the, 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 the Witchcraft Act. That became the Fraudulent Mediums Act. Now, it wasn't perfect. We know it wasn't perfect, but it was so much better than the alternative of what we've got now because by having a fraudulent medium in definition of law, it's implying that there's such a thing as a non fraudulent medium and that was a really really good thing to have and i regret that we lost that to become the consumer because we, we are that. now covered by consumer law but the interesting thing is if i'm working in a church the consumer law doesn't actually legally apply to me and this is something that was heavily discussed at the time in relation to the entertainment purposes only oh yeah if we are working as part of a a divine service within a religious environment that rule does not apply and that rule just interject that rule only applies for offcom regulations when you're broadcasting absolutely but that's it, did, it that's all it did used to be part of the fraudulent mediums yeah. act in um in checks and precedents and in the the the, the, the usage of the fraudulent mediums act it was within the Fraudulent Mediums Act. But you're absolutely right, Richard. It only applies as an Ofcom regulation. And yep. um, I, uh, Deb Clark says the word church puts people off. I know, um, but I, I agree yeah. with you. It does. But I'm not going to call my group uh, a group or a centre because it is a church. And I would much rather be honest about what we are. We are a church at little port but we're also a church that is open and welcoming and we need to educate people about the terms religion church and god because they are the three that really really wind me up and this goes back to what uh, ashley oliver was saying people will say to me spiritualism is not a religion well it has been the whole time that i've been a part of it because the term religion the term church and the term God have all been Christianified in terms of disdain. When you say the word God, they are assuming you are talking about the Christian God. When you talk about church, they are thinking of, you know, sitting there being dictated to and told to. And when you are talking about religion, they are seeing it as one of the big three. That is not the case. 
a religion can be your and a religion is your own matter of conscience your own relationship with the divine we have got pagans christo pagans we have got reiki masters we've got everything in between we've got spiritualists christian spiritualists jewish spiritualists and all manner of different spiritualists in our church because we are open to the idea that none of us are right and none of us are wrong that we're all part of this grand tapestry but i will not be told that spiritualism is not a religion it is a religion by definition any group that comes together through common cause in relationship to a divine being whatever you call it it is classified as a religion i'm not talking about an old-fashioned fuddy-duddy religion the thing i love about spiritualism is that it can be whatever you need it to be that's the beauty that's what drew me in and it's what can draw people in if we actually talk about it rather than you know as somebody pointed out earlier i think it was um laura manning um backstabbing each other's mediums and Leslie, backbiting yeah, and fighting um it that's what puts people off from us as well because we become no better than those three words that we constantly criticize i get on my high horse about the meanings of words because we do need to educate spiritualism is a religion it is a philosophy it is a way of life and it can be a pseudoscience in the views of the main scientists but it is very scientifically describable it can be what you need it to be it is beautiful it is uplifting and it can be what you want it to be um you know we were talking about recommending of mediums if a medium's not prepared to recommend another medium i would start worrying if you got onto the phone to me and say nick i'm relatively new to lincolnshire and the cambridgeshire area do you know any good mediums yeah here's a list you know, and if I would say, well, I know I'm available, you'd be concerned and you'd be quite right to be concerned because it's yeah, not that's about what... us. It's about the work and it's about helping well, people. Do you know what, Nick? It's interesting you say this because on my website. You feel better um, now. I do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's such a good old grand. He's got oh, it on his chest. Bless him. <laughs> um, he's going for it. So it's sort of like join behind Nick Brown's banner to this morning. And it's wonderful. But I just want to say, Nick, since I've been here, since I've been in Lincolnshire, I've had lots of people contacting me wanting readings from East Sussex. So what do I do? I said, well, I can't give you, and they want face to face, not online. What do I do? Recommend my friend Neil Payne, who lives in Brighton yeah. in East Sussex. And I yeah. said, you know, I can't give you a better recommendation than my friend Neil. I said, get in touch with him. I said, he'll give you a one-to-one -one face to face reading. So, you know, that's what you do. If you know yeah. somebody where a person lives, you recommend a church, you recommend a person. It's spreading the word. It doesn't have to come yes. from you personally. Absolutely. It's about spreading the word of good mediumship, good quality mediumship See, people that that's care, what... people that people that um feel the compassion for another soul living mm. or in the spirit world that's when i used to when i used to be medium secretary of a church you did and this was going back years ago before the internet god that makes me feel old <laughs> but anyway well the internet was there but it wasn't it was dial up you know with the funny tones um but anyway, and you would ring up the medium secretaries at other churches and yeah. you would speak. Who do you recommend? Who's this? If, they, if a new medium came to the church, the medium secretary would always be invited to that church to yes. keep an eye on and say, what do you think? I really like that person. Let's book them. And then you would book them there and then. Yeah. For those you got dates. your diary with you. I yeah. love that. Phrase. And mum still uses it. Are you got your and diary with her? I'm doing next year. Yeah, um, this is one of the reasons why I launched the SBTV directory, where people can register their names for free and to put their names on a directory as a working medium psychic healer or whatever the case may be. And then it comes to us. They don't get listed straight away. They have to apply to be on the list. And it can take some time for me to go through it, check them out, check out their Facebook and see if they're going live. And then they are approved. But on this page, you have a rate and review system. So people can go on and they can rate 
the individual, they can write a review. Now, those reviews don't go live. They come to me first. They go via the directory. I will then read the review and then see if it's justified. So in case they are targeted and may have had a bad expression, a bad day, because some mediums and readers, they do have bad days. You know, and it's like any other f- people, they have bad days as well. And it could have affected them on that reading. So we've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely. And, but sadly, people don't use a directory. They're not going on to it because they're just either too busy. They're not reading up on it. You type in your postcode. And it will tell you your nearest medium, only those who are registered, of course. They won't just have anybody on there. And we get people on. In fact, this morning when I got up, there was another six to be added to, to the list to, to approve for me to go through and search and do the investigation. There's another directory out there very similar to SBTV. You have to pay to be on there. And they don't care who's on that list. They just accept you, take your money off you. And then if you want to add pictures or add anything else to the directory, you've got to pay for it. Where yeah. SPTV one is 100% free. You can add videos, you can have images, upload audio. It's all there to use. You can even get people to book you via the site as well. And it's all free. And so I say to people, if you are looking for someone, use word of mouth, use a directory. It's there to be used. It's free. And that directory is also on the app. So if you download the app and it's on your uh, phone and you can select which country you're on type in your postcode or your zip code and it will tell you but yet again it'll only show you those who've been registered because they've been vetted yes that's the difference absolutely i, I I've, I've just got to say i love what ashley oliver has said of course reverend ashley oliver um studied in a ceremony uh, seminary as an interfaith minister absolutely i've got some training ministers at the moment and they were so shocked that i said pick three different religions, not denominations, and compare them to spiritualism. Study this religion and tell me what you find within it that ties in and resonates with spiritualism. The more we talk and look and understand other religions, the more we see that the the similarities and the nuggets of truth within it. And there is nuggets of truth within everything. And there are nuggets of beauty and joy within everyone. You know, the word church is not about a building. It's about the people. The word religion is about coming together, not dictating. And, you know, it's all, all about communication. And interestingly enough, we've got a little bit of a video about communication today, haven't we, Richard? We have, yeah. So um, I'm going to ask you a question now, Karen. What if? Oh, you want that video? Okay, yeah. I had Kate May ready. Oh, I was just about to do Kate May. Yeah, uh, I know, but he jumped in with the what I if. Didn't re- I know. I didn't realize. I just thought it was a nice tie-in to communicate. All oh, right, I put, I put the um. Just to let everybody know what these are. I've been creating these videos called What If uh, on TikTok, and I really would love everybody to go on there, have a look, um, give, put some comments, put some feedback. I would love for these to go viral. We, we don't have many people viewing them, um. They're all inspired by me. The writings are by me. I don't use uh, chat GPT. I don't use anything. The only thing I use is a video. No, I don't. I use a image creator for these images to help me out because I don't have time to do it myself. And then obviously create the AI for the voiceover. But all the words are from me. I get inspired. Like last week, Nick and Karen on Wednesday, wasn't it? You were talking about yes, it was, yeah. something. Yeah. And I was just inspired. It's one word. All I hear, all I need is like one word or two words. And that's it. I'm off. Um, yeah. And it was about like, forgiveness, wasn't it? Forgiveness and it bullying. Was, yeah. 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 So yeah. straight away, I said, I'm going to go on mute. And I tippy tap it away um, to, to type uh, like a little what if. So that's what it is. It's there to open your mind a little bit more. And if you're struggling or if you're going through something in your life and not sure what to do, just go through the what if, find one that feels just right to look at the picture, then play it. And hopefully it will help you on your day. And this one was inspired yesterday. Um, I had a phone call from my, just a bit of personal information. My mother suffers from severe dementia. She's in a nursing home and she's at the stage where she's now angry, uh, violent. And so as we know, that's one of the last sort of things. And so she's at that stage. So what the nursing home is doing is getting people just to 
text or just to quickly have a call just so they can hear a familiar voice, even though they don't know that it's a familiar voice they do recognize. So, and that got me thinking as to it only takes seconds that there's no excuse for anyone not to text. So this video is called Feeling Alone. I hope it inspires some of you because when I put it on TikTok yesterday, I had 13 people text me asking if I was okay. And I went, yeah, why? And then I realized they've watched the video, yeah. which was nice. So it actually did work. So anyway, I'm going to play it. Hopefully, Nick and Karen, you'll be able to hear it. I think I've sorted it out this morning. Uh, it. It's only on for about a minute, minute and 30 seconds, so it's not long. But I hope you enjoy it. It goes like this. What if the small act of sending a text could be a lifeline for someone in need? Imagine the power of a few simple words, typed and sent in just seconds, reaching out to someone who feels isolated, unloved, or forgotten. In the rush of our daily lives, we often underestimate the impact of small gestures of kindness and connection. What if today you took a moment to reach out to someone not knowing fully what battles they might be facing alone? That quick check-in, a simple, how are you or thinking of you, could be the moment of support that pulls someone back from the edge of loneliness. It's a reminder to them, and perhaps to us, that no one is truly alone and that care can bridge vast distances. Even if you're navigating your own challenges, reaching out might not only lift someone else's spirits, but could also bring unexpected solace to your own journey. Let's make the commitment to never assume others are okay just because they haven't said otherwise. Let's be the friend, the family member, the acquaintance who says, I'm here, you're valued, with a message that takes only a moment to send, but might echo in someone's life far beyond that instant. Today, let's wield our phones not just as tools of distraction, but as instruments of meaningful connection. Let's remember that in the age of constant communication, the most important messages are those that convey heartfelt concern and unwavering support. Wow. Beautiful. Wow, wow, wow. That was beautiful. It really, Absolutely really was. Absolutely beautiful. And you know how what? how beautifully that tied in as well, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm so I'm kind yeah. of glad I didn't see the message that Kate May was next because you know this just is is the is the but the pretty bow on, yeah. on the conversation. It is it's yeah. about bringing people together and communicating and speaking your truth and making sure it people is. can and, hear you. And you know what the funny thing was, I did that this morning. Um, a friend of mine's going through a tough time, and I just text. You know, any news? How are you? Um, hope you're okay. Uh, thinking of you, and and it just takes seconds to do that. Um, and I love receiving those. Hi, not seen, not heard from you. Are you okay? You know, it it just think you go. Oh, someone does care, especially if you live alone or you you're struggling. I think that's really really important. So well done, Richard. Absolutely. Well done. And I've got to say, Richard. Uh, yeah, I've also got to say, Richard, after what we talked about last Wednesday and, and the what if you made about forgiveness and bullying, it, yeah. it really was extremely touching. There are loads of them. There's one every day, my friends. Get onto TikTok at SPTV UK. Have a look. They are gorgeous and you can share them yeah. too. Um, but of course, bringing things back into the order that they were supposed to be um because i didn't see the message because i was too busy getting on a rant um but i stand by what i said it can be it is everything to all people um but just don't tell people that it's not something to them um speaking of people who are passionate about what they do it is of course kate may karen what time is it it's roland richard's time Good morning, everyone. My name is Kate May, Modern Day Mystic. Super excited this week. Not only have we entered Taurus season, but I also have my Astro Tarot deck out ready now for um, pre-order. You can grab that and anything else from me on katemay.co.uk. So welcome to your week ahead tarot readings for each zodiac sign. Let's have a look at the 20... 
first, second of April, let's have a look at what um, Aries have for you this week, Aries. It's the King of Pentacles. Fabulous week this week, Aries, for anything connected to business, money, getting organised, feeling like you're on it. You could be decluttering this week. This would be a really good week to meet with business people and to get um, thoroughly organised with anything connected to material matters, so your business or your home, practical energy there. Somebody important will come along and help you this week. Okay, Taurus, feeling a bit frustrated this week, Taurus, perhaps feeling a bit trapped um, and maybe feeling the victim who knows why when it is your season so this is important week Taurus, for you to think outside the box where there's a box where there's a will there's a way so you're going to need to think differently and act smart to break free from frustrations gemini stay put at the moment gemini don't try to um juggle too many things going on however you'll also find that by restricting yourself could cause limitations so find the balance this could be a week where you might have to watch what's coming in financially and what's going out financially. So be a bit careful about the pennies, Gemini. Cancer, emotional opportunities. Things need to be looked at a little bit different. All is not clear. Try not to be too disillusioned and lead, living in a fantasy land, Cancerians. Do a little bit more research and explore opportunities emotionally. Keep your options open. Leo, time to celebrate this week, Leo. Good news is around you, letting your hair down, fun. You might find there's a birthday or party to actually celebrate, or you're gonna hear some news that connects you to like-minded people where you can really feel that sisterhood bond. Enjoy a celebrational week, Leos. Virgos, feeling a bit sad this week, Virgos, feeling a bit down, a bit fed up. But remember, look at the cup half full, not half empty. There are more positives than negatives around you. But sometimes you've just got to draw that little head out and that emotional feeling um, from the sand and look up and look around you. OK, there is more things that you can do this week, Virgo, but you've got to give yourself a bit of a push. So it, you might just feel a little bit um bit emotional i'm going to say this week virgo so look up don't look down libra hard work eight of pentacles time to focus on what you want get knuckling down to it prioritize things pay attention to detail pull up those sleeves and crack on with it because it will pay off try not to be too scattered this week libra try and um, put all your eggs in one basket as you finish projects there Sag uh, scorpio lovers deep connections with people that you love or people that you are very um, connected with, perhaps emotionally, one way or another. Choices and decisions, Scorpio, though, things that need discussion. You're going to have to have big discussions, whether you like it or not, to clear the air. Be open and be honest, particularly with yourself. Sagittarius, you're juggling things this week, Sagittarius, so you could find money is in one hand, out the other, or you've got perhaps two resources there that you're juggling. However, you are able to do it. You are in a position to, to juggle, so it's not all bad. You're keeping your feet and um, going, you're keeping your head above water, is what I want to say. But I feel this week, uh, Sagittarius, you're going to have a choice between two practical needs, two homes, two jobs. Something's going to need to be weighed up for you in a decision-making. Capricorn. Yes, Capricorn, your own card. You're going to feel happy, content, secure. You'll have everything. You want your cake and eat it. You're able to manage home, work, family, friends, the whole shebang this week, Capricorn. You're going to be in a good position and a positive financial lady or business lady will help you. Aquarius, feeling happy, counting your blessings this week, Aquarius. Look around you, see how marvellous everything is. A really good week for you, Aquarians, where you'll start to see positive things coming around you, hard work paying off, and just emotionally feeling chuffed, feeling pleased, feeling satisfied that your hard work has paid off and you're in a good mood and everything is lush around you. So count your blessings this week, Aquarians. And Pisces, walk away from what no longer serves you. Now, this is a card of like, you're fed up, you're bored of your life, you're fed up with certain situations, Pisces, so now you need to make a decision. What can you do about it? And this card indicates going in search of yourself, spiritual self, leaving things behind that no longer serve you and finding inner peace. Only you can do it. Meditate, do things that you enjoy. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you. And of course, speaking of genuine souls, there's one right there. Thank you to the lovely Kate May. Yes, yeah, she's a lovely lady. And also tonight we have Mincy May on at 8.30. So he's another lovely, genuine soul who's oh, a fantastic oh, yes. reader. 
So join SPTV tonight at 8.30 for the lovely Minty May. So, uh, and of course, our very own Richard will probably be on TikTok at 10 o'clock tonight. So come and join him. And now I've got uh, the correct amount of followers. Um, I can come and get in the box. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So that would be good too. Oh, Jack in the box. Oh, dear. I don't know. Cheese. I don't know. Cheese. Cheesy joke time. Cheesy. Get him off. Can, get him off. can anybody hear you still, Richard? Oh, so so they didn't hear that. Oh, that's a shame. No. They'd have loved it. They'd have loved it. They would. But thank you. <laughs> we now now we know he's not being heard. Uh, <laughs> I definitely know. We are back, of course, my friends. And you're absolutely right. Minty is a, a truly wonderful exponent of this way of life. I'll never forget when he came to Littleport for the SPTV um, event that we hosted for SPTV. Um, he gave me a wonderful, wonderful tiger's eye in this beautiful little bag. And it's now on my crystal shelf with with my collection. It is such a genuine, kind, giving soul and such a wonderful, wonderful person to reach out to when you are in need. And of course, we're going to do some reaching out now, aren't we, Karen? We most certainly are, because it's time to uh, bring some messages from our loved ones in the spirit world. So, do you want to go first today? I'll do my best. Um, let's let's hope that I don't just get angry, ranty people through, and that I've jinxed myself. Um, you know, I, I think I think we need to be more passionate about our way of life, though. That's all I'm saying. Um, but I do know the reason the reason I, I i always analyze what i'm saying before a message comes in and as i feel someone building up is that what is being spoken about is you know something that they're going to touch on and i do know that i've got someone who was very passionate in their physical life and would would be you know someone who was very very strongly geared towards making sure that that those in need were supported wonderful thank you um it's this gentleman as it's thank you as this gentleman steps forward um i know that he was a very passionate man although he did just turn around to me and say but i don't think i'd have got my blood pumping as much as you did i think there are people and the person that i'm going to speak to today would probably disagree with that but he had a different view of himself in that school so i do know this gentleman as he steps forward thank you i would say that he was around about the six he was quite tall so i'd say around about six foot he was very broad in the shoulders he was quite a stocky um strong man um and i know that he'd got this this wonderfully um I like the way you referred to that. A very experienced face. Um, his life was written into his face. Someone who had got the smile lines and the wrinkle lines and all of the lines. He says it, it marked my journey. My, you could tell you could tell my life from my face. So his face was very experienced, and I love the way he worded that. Um, once again, though, his eyes gave him away. If he was sad, his eyes told you. If he was happy, his eyes told you. And if he was annoyed, his eyes definitely told you. So you, they were the window to his soul in particular. Um, as, he, as he steps forward with that, um, that, that physicality, I know he could have been seen as very looming, but I want to say that gentle giant approach. I feel this gentleman was... a. Uh, 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 either a, a, a grandfather or an uncle i feel that paternal connection but i do feel a bit of a distance with it um you, you do remind me of someone i'm trying to figure out why but I'll, I'll ignore that um i do know that there's a d name in connection either a david or a daniel i'm not quite hearing it very well and i know he would have had a hearing problem um, either that or really just got everybody's name wrong. A bit like me. I'm I'm very good at getting people's names wrong. Isn't that right, Stephanie? Um, <laughs> um, but I do know that this gentleman was very well spoken. He had a, a very, very um, 
theatrical voice. I want to say that kind of Ian McKellen style voice. Um, very, very deep, you know, I, and, and instantly I feel this, this depth and this gravity about his voice. You know, there was a slight honey to it, but there was also a real gentle storytelling, uh, you know, kind of style to him. And I know that he would have hunched forward when he started to talk to you. And it was all about drawing you in. And he, oh boy, this man could tell a yarn. I know that there's an anniversary in November connecting to him. And I do want to speak to a young lady on here today. He calls you young lady. Um, and I know that you are blonde. Um, and I know that you have got a beautiful smile, uh, in his words, when you can be bothered to use it. Um, so I do feel that he he's very very uplifting i hope somebody can understand this i don't think we've got anybody saying yes yet um but if you can understand this please let me know so that we can connect you um daniel morris can take both the names and the description i can see though daniel that you are not a blonde young lady um would you understand either a, a partner or a sister somebody who would have known this gentleman who would be blonde who's in need of a bit of upliftment at the moment um this this is very very specific he's talking about this blonde young lady who needs to be uplifted and has got a beautiful smile when she can be bothered to use it um um so Daniel, if you could, if, 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 uh, uh, and, and Helen Smith um, knows of uh, 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 the, the description as well, is connecting in with her. Um, and, and Denise uh, can connect with everything except the D. Right, uh, one of you, um, oh, and Bernadette Helen West can take everything that I just said. Um, Daniel, if you could come back to me about um, whether there is someone on the earth plane in your life who could do with using their beautiful smile, a young blonde lady at the moment, that would also be appreciated. Um, yes, you're, I did feel drawn to you, even though you weren't blonde. Um, I don't mind blondes, brunettes myself personally, but in a spiritual way, I felt drawn to you, Daniel. Um, and you could you could understand everything and you've got the sister who needs a bit of a pick me up thank you to everyone else who has commented uh, but i did feel a connection with daniel when he came on the screen even though he wasn't blonde um you know or female to be true um but if i may work with you daniel um you would understand that you have kind of taken on his role you actually have got a very simple a way of behaving to this gentleman especially when it comes to the leaning over and supporting people you are one of those people in the world that seems to take on the burden of the world and really really wants to help people but what this gentleman is saying is that you are extremely good at um well you you, you hope to be extremely good you are he's complimenting you you don't always believe it but you're extremely good at putting that barrier of protection around yourself and you're you're much more able to deal with things than other people um in relation to getting sorted and finding your way through problems and this gentleman is absolutely thank you daniel is absolutely proud of you for having that um you know this could have easily been taken as as, as a negative comment this is you're much more stable than others. So he's, he's referring to you as a very stable person. And I do feel that sometimes his compliments would be misconstrued or his compliments was, could sometimes be misinterpreted because he's a, you're very stable, um, you know, which is then implying to other people, what well, does that mean I'm not stable? So people would quite often take offense um, to his tone and his way. You're much more, um, yeah. Thank you, Dane. Um, you're much more modern than I was. Um, and let's be honest, still am. Um, and and, and he, he hasn't changed. He's he's got this really, really um jovial. I, I feel that he would he would sit and get eggs. And I don't know why I'm doing this. There's something about how he used to sit in the chair and when he would get going, you know, 
um, shaking from the shoulders and moving from the shoulders and his arms going forward into his lap. Um, you know, so um, uh, this is just one of the positions that he would have probably sat in and, you know, come on, let's get on with it, you know, ha ha. Um, and really, really upbeat, really, really jovial character when he needed to be. But once again, when the doors were closed and everyone had gone home, he was, thank you, of course, in relation to that video earlier on that, that Richard's produced for the TikToks, the what ifs, he was a very lonely man. Um, and so he understands what's going on with sister. He sympathizes with what's going on with sister. Um, and he, he wholeheartedly absolutely loves the bones of you for your concern. And he just says, make her smile because that smile is so, so infectious. But then so's yours, um, you know. When you when you get giggling, and uh, uh, he's, he's it's either a memory link from when he was here or something you've done within the last um, within the last few days. Actually, something really really got you belly rolling. Um, there are some people who just laugh from the back of the throat, um, but you are someone when you get off on one. You laugh from the shoes up and you laugh so hard that your belly hurts and it's like, can't breathe. And, and he's, um, oh, bless you. Thank you, Daniel. He's, he's talking about one of these occasions, either when he was around or that you've actually experienced in the last few days. I don't want to go any longer than a week, but I'm saying probably three days ago maximum. So Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Um, there was this real belly laugh moment. It might have just been something daft on the internet that you saw, but he's talking about these real from the shoes up belly laughs. That's what you both need. It doesn't need to be all singing, all dancing, chanting bells and spirituality. Just a darned good laugh can make a huge difference, uh, especially when it comes to the situation that I connected with you on. He has huge praise for you, Daniel, and I know that you don't always get it from down here or, or feel you don't get it from down here, but he's got huge praise for you because you are so, so balanced and stable and ready to just do what needs to be done for the for the needs of those that you care about. And he says, more power to your elbow, son, more power to your elbow. You go get him, tiger. Um, and I have to say that specifically, go get him, tiger. Um, but he just wants to say laughter is a great medicine. Make use of it and, and never forget that I've got your back and I am watching. I told you I'd be watching. I told you I'd keep an eye. Um, yeah, he was on his own most of the time. Bless him. Well, he certainly, uh, ah, I look after my sister. We have a mega bond. Well done, mate. This is what he's so proud of you for because of that bond. But, uh, <laughs> yes, that's you. Bless your heart. Thank you, Daniel, for your feedback. And thank you for shouting out. He is absolutely proud of all of you. And I've got to say, there is a quick message for your sister. You're doing better than you think you are. And you certainly need to be a little bit more proud of, the, of yourself than you are. Because he's saying... She might not always feel like it, but she's standing tall and has every reason to be smiling and proud of herself. And you, sir, you young man, absolutely the same. God bless you both. And I'll say thank you for listening. Oh, Nick, that was a wonderful message. Really heartfelt. I love it when you go into character of the communicator. Absolutely love it. So I can't sure help don't. it these days. They just come so close. It's like, I want to do what they were doing. I know. It's... I know. It's wonderful. And I'm sure Daniel appreciates that. Now, as I've been sitting here, I'm aware of a lovely lady that draws close to me from the world of spirit. And I know that she was uh, very fastidious about her hair. I also know that um, she would have, She's drawing my attention to a program that I watched on Saturday night, probably like most of you out there. I watched Britain's Got Talent. So I feel that she would have watched Britain's Got Talent or something similar. 
Uh, I want to go back as well to sort of opportunity knocks and new faces. Now I'm really showing my age here. Um, but uh, she would have, the, the telly would have been uh, a very big part of her life. And she keeps fussing with her hair. So I feel it was something that she would have done constantly, fiddling about with her hair. And I also know that uh, she's drawing attention to my watch. So I know that she would have had quite a nice watch. But I feel someone here has. But I also feel that she was a bit of a stickler for the time as well, because she's making me look at my watch as if to say, you know, time's ticking on. And I feel that she was very conscious of time. Um, she was, I, I want to say that she also suffered with a lot of co uh, uh, cold because I don't get cold, but I'm sitting here shivering. So I feel that towards the end of her life, there was a lot of weight that went. So it's making me feel here that it was a cancer condition that took her. But I just feel that she lost a hell of a lot of weight. Um, and she was before that, shall we say, sort of a bit, you know, a, a bit nice and cuddly. She sort of like was well endowed a little, uh, uh, you know, and she sort of like was, was a nice cuddly lady. Um, but I just feel the weight fell off her uh, towards the end of her life. Um, but she just wants to reach out. Uh, and I do feel it's mum here. Uh, and she just wants to reach out to her daughter. And um, something about time with you at the moment something about time with the daughter that she wants to talk about so if you can understand any of this if you can um if you can let me know that would be greatly appreciated um she, do you know what she's got a great sense of humor as well but she could be quite she could be proper sometimes and she her face said it all she had one of those faces where she couldn't hide if she was annoyed um and okay girl you can understand this okay uh she and i just feel that she would sit there like mm -hmm, uh-huh yeah and she would know when you were maybe being a little bit economical with the truth like it wasn't me mum i didn't do it um and going back to clearing tidying your room i feel she was a bit like our mama brown very stickler for sort of tidying up but she'd just make housework effortless because she'd go about her day tidying, putting things away as she was having a conversation with you. And everything was effortless with this lady. And I just feel that she loved to be, her words, in the bosom of her family. I just feel that family was very important to her. But I do also feel that even though she wouldn't say I just feel that when you all sort of fled the mess, so to speak, uh, she did feel that sense of alone being on her own. But she kept saying that she was fine, that, that everything was OK. But I just feel that your house scale, if you can understand that, um, was sort of, a, you know, everything was going on, people in and out. But then she said that it was quiet. Everybody left. Um, and she was sort of on her own. And I know she looked after family as well. I know she looked after family. And I feel that she looked after her parents. So I feel that the house was always full with pet, grandparents, aunts and uncles. And there's a whole buzz going on. But this lady, gave, this lady gave a lot to people. And she loved, she had a good rapport with her neighbours too. And um, but this sense of loneliness, she wants to reach out to you, Gail. So would you understand where either you or someone is feeling alone at the moment? Because she just wants to reach out. She's saying, you're not alone. I'm here. I've been around. I've been sending you lots of love. I've been giving you support. Um, she's also making me aware that she would have loved cards, special cards with words in. Um, and she kept some of them as well. And they would have had to have not just the card, but the card with the sheet in where you would have got sort of a words on the front, opened it up, more words on both sides. And I feel that words really touched her. They really meant a lot to her. And she would keep things like that. And she would reread them too. And I also feel there's some, I've got a, a little notebook here that I use. and. It's um, based on Jane Austen, 
So I know that you or her would have read the books like Pride and Prejudice and things like that, uh, Sense and Sensibility. So I feel that she either read the books or she loved a period drama on the telly, because I know lots of those have been made into dramas. So I just feel I've got the sense of the two of you gearing up to watch things like Downton Abbey, Pride and Prejudice, Upstairs, Downstairs, things like that. I just feel that she would have watched, she would have loved it. And it would have been like, right, half past seven, we're going to watch this now. And um, she just loved that time. It was the simple things as she got older that meant the world to her. And she says that you may mean the world to her. And also she wants to reach out to a, a, a young man as well. And I know you've got a lovely young man in that photograph, but I do feel she wants to reach out to a young man and to say how proud she is of all her family, but especially the young man's achievements because, ah, oh, the Catherine Cookson books. Yes, I love the Catherine Cookson uh, and the films. Um, but I just feel here that she just wants to say um, that she wants to say how proud she is because the young man that she's referring to has had his own hurdles to jump over. And he's always he's always stood his ground and he's always kept the faith and he's such a lovely young man and he did it. He did what he had to do. And she's so proud of you for all the love and the support that you give to your family. And she just wants to send you lots and lots of love. So I hope that made sense, Go, and thank you for working with me. Wonderful. Bless your heart. That's awesome. Bless your heart. You know, I've been on a bit of a, a, a wild ride with your memory um, reminding of that lovely lady coming through, reminding me of wonderful shows like New Faces, which I did used to watch myself. Um, yeah. And Porter House Blue. There's another one. Oh, I remember that. David Jason. David yes. Jason. Yeah. And in actual fact, yeah. the, the gate for Porterhouse Blue was actually the Saccharists' gate at Ely Cathedral. They, oh, they really? filmed that as the gate to the, the Porterhouse. Um, oh, so, wow. you know, uh, it's, it's lovely when a, a message inspires memories of your own. Um, and, and, you know, it gives you an idea of the kind of mindset of the person that's coming through. What a beautiful lady to to come through and give such upliftment. And well done, Karen. Bless your heart. Um, I, I wish I could say some of the things that I'm about to say are equally as historically inspiring. Um, but but a nice big hello to Sarah Jane Charles, by the way. Hello there. Um, hello, Sarah Jane. On Facebook. Um, I'm 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 reminded of the gentleman who stepped in just after you started working actually he says i think you need a bit of a rest mate let me help you um you've 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 been a bit excitable today you need to calm down um a, a very a very grandfather figure um i know this gentleman would have been not old old actually he looked older than he was if the truth be told um so although he appears probably um you know the old archetypal image of of a grandfather um he was actually probably only in his late 50s early 60s he was receding he was gray um and he's he's so comfortable I, I just feel so relaxed being near him. Um, he's sitting in, he's showing himself, and I don't know whether this is a memory link. Um, actually, no, I do know it is a memory link because that's what he's showing me. Um, a memory link of where he would have existed in the physical world. A very dark room, um, you know, very bright, big window behind him, but the curtains were usually kind of, drawn to keep the room oh thank you that's an interesting fact um the curtains were kept very thick and drawn to keep the room cool but there would be a beam of light coming through the window and you know how you can see the dust rolling through those beams of light as they come into a darkened room for anyone who's watched the doctor who um silence in the library a bit like the vashta narada um you know he found that quite hilarious actually 
Um, I said, oh, that looks like the Vashna Narada. He said, they didn't eat me. Don't worry about it. Get over it. So he's a very pragmatic man. But as he sits, he's sitting quite comfortably relaxed in this chair, the beam of light coming down beside him into this slightly darkened room, really laid back, his arms stretched out on the arms of the chair. I do see braces as well with this gentleman. Um, and he's he's just relaxed i do feel a sense of loss with him so i feel that he would have lost his partner um or someone very very the person who kept him down his partner would have gone beforehand and so he would have felt on his own for a little while and that's why quite often the curtains weren't opened as much as they should have been to let the light in um but he was he was actually happy to just sit there and daydream and remember the good times. And you know what? I've got to be honest. People would have assumed he might have been a bit, um, it might have assumed that it would have been, um, what, what, what might, um, I know there would have been some, some confusion and difficulty speaking with this uh gentleman i do have a gentleman here sarah jane um just to just to clarify this is a gentleman that i'm speaking with um i know you say my grandma but, but this this feels like a, a grandfatherly figure um would that have been your grandma that passed first um if if if, if you could just uh he died no because this is this i feel this gentleman was left behind um, and he's just sitting there, you know, remembering and watching. And it would take somebody to come in and open the curtain and, and, and wake him up. If that's something that grandma used to do, that might be different. But um, I do feel this gentleman was actually not the, 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 the moody, broody kind. He was just thoughtful, slower, contemplative. From the, the speech and the the, the thinking i know there would have been some kind of and i can actually feel my eye going numb so i can feel all of this side going so i know there would have been a bit of a stroke and i know i keep jumping um in my conversations this would have been something that he would have done if if, if you can understand this just just let me know um either sarah or or if anyone else can understand this because i do feel that he was left behind because i I, I feel I feel he was left behind um, and he didn't he didn't get angry about it. Um, he didn't get angry about it. He didn't get moody about it. He got maudlin and melancholy and down and disappointed, but he would try and avoid showing people his emotions as best he could. It's it just the way we were. And I just feel really, really comfortable in my own skin, sitting with this this beam of light. And he says, it's, it's like the beam of light was coming from heaven, letting me know she was still keeping an eye on me, which is a very spiritual way of thinking. Chris Reese, um, I, I think it could be um, your grandpa Will. Um, would you understand all of, of what I've said? Um, just to clarify that, he would get, Mardi and Maudlin, but but not angry and resentful. Um, and Debbie Week says, my dad lost his wife 12 months ago and was very lost. Um, he had macula and he was so lonely. You would understand, though, that this gentleman didn't like to show his loneliness and tried to represent that he was OK. Um, he was all right in his own skin. Whether or not it was true, that's the image he was trying to portray. And again, I've got to go back to this stroke and the feeling in the eye. Um, and I actually do feel really, really warm with this gentleman. I actually started the day feeling cold, but this gentleman has right warmed me up. Um, and again, I do feel that he was very plain spoken because I started being reminded of my my local accent which is very down to earth and very rural um and right warms me up is not exactly you know well spoken grammar because 
I'll probably get told off by Richard for it afterwards. Um, but it's part of the message, so I'll get away with it. So this was a gentleman um, who was very, very down to earth, very straightforward, but would try and make everyone convinced that he was happy. Chris, thank you everyone for calling out. I actually do feel drawn to, to Chris. Um, I, I used to say with him to look after him. Oh, you used to stay with him to look after him when he was bad. If I may, Chris, would you understand that you are going through something at the moment where you are starting to behave like him in terms of sitting in darkened rooms? Um, he's concerned about it. <laughs> could be for any number of reasons, you know, and 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 maybe the 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 cause of it might be sometimes a little bit positive, um, but it's not mine to decide what that is. It's your life and it's your privacy, so I'm not being shown. Other than there are there is kind of you starting to have a little bit of of your grandfather in you in terms of sitting on your own in a darkened room, um, and it is that uh, and that's you too, Debbie Weeks. Okay. Um, thank you, Debbie. I, I do feel drawn to Chris um, because the, it looks like there's a cat coming out of his jacket. Um, some of the weirdest things I get. Debbie, it, I'm sure your 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 grandpa is around as well, um, and I, you know, just stay tuned. I might be completely wrong in my but I do feel drawn to Chris at the moment because um, there's there's something about the eyebrows that that screams of your grandfather. Um, it's, it's these these weird little features that we recognize in ourselves and each other when it comes to relationships. And, you know, I know your granddad would quite often go off on a tangent, which is exactly what I'm doing, um, but also trying to talk to everybody and bring everybody in and try to make sure everyone's OK. And, you know, apologizing for not noticing these things. This is something your grandfather would have been like, certainly throughout his life. But even more so, if there was more than one person in the room, he didn't like to only acknowledge one person. It had to he had to bring everybody in because he actually did get excited when people came to visit. And I know you had a very special bond with him. And he says he's got me eyebrows. Look, he's, he's still got me eyebrows. Um and he's having a bit of a there there is this kind of dry chuckle with him. Even though it's not a loud belly laugh, you could feel it coming up from his gut, a bit like the what I said to the other person before, whose name's completely gone out of my head now. We'll be back when I stop working. Um, but you know, that, that rather than being, you know, from the back of the throat, um uh he had big eyebrows. My friend did uh mine yesterday. Ah, he had big eyebrows, and my friend did mine yesterday. So he's watching. He says, "You still got, you still got, you still got me eyebrows." You know, they'll then they'll, they'll certainly be back. Um, and that, but he was somebody who would have this really, really dry, deep laugh that 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 was kind of like a chuckle, um, but it was still meant and felt when it got going. And he's talking about that, that there are a lot of similarities between yourself and him, Chris. Um, he's talking about the difficulties that you face. You, he's talking about the, the the visual, the emotional, and even even that beam of light running past you. He says, it might not have been the missus. It might not have been the missus, but it helped me think that it was. But I'll tell you, watch, when there's light shining behind you, it's definitely me. Um, and I don't know whether that's... Uh, an acknowledgement of an event that's happened recently with you, Chris, about this beam of light being behind you, some kind of light source behind you, and you saying, I wonder if this is so and so. This is, definitely is me. This light behind you is definitely me. Um, he, he is wanting to remind you of all of the things that you said to him about sitting in a darkened room on your own. He says, You already know everything I'm going to say because it was you that told it to me. So get your socks up, get your laces done, and get yourself out there. Um, I do feel that this gentleman was a very old-fashioned in style, but modern in attitude. And I do know that he wholeheartedly stands by your side. 
Um, and he really, really wants to push you forward and say, go for it, go for it, go for it. Get out there and enjoy yourself. It, 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 oh, it's been a while since I got some. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Enjoy yourself because you are still in the pink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. So enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. He says, and it is time to enjoy yourself. Stop thinking about everybody else. Put yourself first for once and stop worrying about what other people think. Um, be bold, be brave, stand up and fight the good fight because that's exactly what this gentleman believed in. Um, and I hope you can understand that, Chris, and I'll say God bless you and thank you for listening. And he was that's right. He was, he was much more you know, karma. Uh, I was taken to hospital and they put me in so room and, and amazing. Oh. You're very well, welcome. You're very, very welcome, Chris. God bless you, my friend. Oh, okay. And, you know, be bold. It just goes to show the spirit world are around when you need them and, and it's important. Now, okay. I've been sitting here listening to Nick's lovely message, but I've also been made aware of two ladies in the spirit world. Um, and I'm going to go with this but because I, I trust, but it's a different message than what I would normally give. Um, can I just ask, Richard, is Neil still on? Is Neil still here? Is he still on? Okay, well, I hope he still is. But I think this this is not just for Neil. It's for, for you, it's for, for Nick, it's for any mediums that are on here at the moment because I'm aware of two ladies and I know that they were both connected to the Arthur Finley College. And I feel nice and, and they're very clear in who they say they are. And this comes, I'm not just saying this, this comes from what they've given me. I got I get the feeling that it's a it's a medium called Jean Bassett and also a lady called Vi, who was also a medium. And they are and I'm in the I was in the lecture room at the Arthur Finley College and also in the library. Uh, Neil, you're on. Good. Um, and I just feel here that, you know, you don't trust it sometimes because you think, oh, you know, I mean, I did meet one of these ladies, but I didn't know very much about her. Um, but I just know that Neil knows one of them quite well. So I just feel that she's here and I just feel that she's making me feel very precise. And I just feel that she would have used the word you know she would have said yes dear that's right dear and i feel that there was two sides to this lady i feel there her, was her professional persona as a medium but i also feel that there was another side to her as well and i also feel that she would have had connections with scotland too so i want to go to scotland so i feel that that she she's taken me to scotland and i also feel the other lady by i feel that she was sort of like she was she wasn't so upfront as 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 this first lady, and I feel it's Jean, Jean Bassett. I just feel that she's not not up, not so upfront as the first lady. But they both are talking about the quality and the standards of mediumship. So I feel they've stepped in because of what we've been talking about today. And Jean is saying, even though the platforms have changed, it doesn't mean that the quality should change. And she is sort of very um, sort of specific about this. And she's saying you are still on the platform, whether it's the virtual platform or the public platform of the church. And you should hold yourself in high regard in all your mediumship that you do. And I know that this lady was an eloquent speaker. And I know this lady was a, was a lot of uh, was a mentor to lots of different people. And she did. She was a force to be reckoned with. because I can feel this strength. I can feel this energy and this. She was very formidable, very formidable. And she's out there and she's saying, fight the good fight and do what was um, do what was was meant to be. And she's also talking about Gordon's army, Gordon's spiritual army. So I know that she is talking about this and she's saying we've got to form, get information and we've got to send that on forward because enough is enough. And that's what she's saying. But this other lady has got a quiet strength, by. She's got a quiet strength. And I feel she would have written. Um, I feel that she would have written things. Poetry, um, philosophy was very passionate to uh, a passionate of hers. 
and I also feel healing as well. She was passionate about lots of things, but she was in the background. She was busying away. And I know that she must have laid the foundations for some sort of educational courses within the SNU. Um, and I just feel that she did hers quietly, whereas Jean was out there, you know, um, strutting her stuff. And um, she was, she did, if you asked her a question and she didn't, and she said that you were wrong, she would tell you, no, you're wrong. Get off the platform. And I feel that she didn't mean so words. And no. she was definitely a force to be reckoned with. But she's got fond memories of you, Neil. And she wants to send you lots of love because she's saying that you got to see the other side of her. And I feel that you helped her a lot at the Arthur Finley College. You know, if she needed something, even it could be water or a cup of tea or something like that, you would always help her. And if she needed sort of, she'd done a den on the platform, I feel she didn't like to eat before she worked. So I feel that you would always make sure there was a sandwich. Um, uh, you would always make sure there was food for her after the platform, even though there was sometimes it, it wasn't always done. But I just feel she just wants to say thank you for your humour, because she said you were never you were never intimidated by me. She said you just treated me. Um, you, you you know we were just mates. We were just good friends. And she said we had a great time together. And I feel that she liked a whiskey because she's raising a whiskey to you. So I do feel she liked a whiskey. So she just wants to send you lots of love. And the lady by, I just feel that she just wants to give you a big hug. So I feel she was a very tactile lady with everybody and everybody loved her. So please take their love. And they are fighting the good fight on the spirit world's behalf. So I feel that there is some change coming. There's something a brewing. That's what I feel. So it's yeah. for you, Neil, but it's also for everybody else and all the mediums that are struggling out there that think, why is this happening? Why are our voices not being heard? They are being heard. And you've got the force of the people that have gone before, um, sort of like backing you up and moving you forward. And I can see sort of like, you know, somebody on a, 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 a horse sort of charging ahead saying fight the good fight and keep working hard so that's love from two pioneering ladies of spiritualism and thank i feel honored and privileged that i've been able to bring them through for you uh today for everybody else so thank you thank you well done awesome <laughs> and gene bassett of course wrote um a lot about gordon higginson in particular his biography mm -hmm. um you know and there's I, Neil says, oh, my God, I was only speaking about both of them last night. Interestingly wow. enough, I was finally given permission to read On the Side of Angels last week. Um, there are certain books that my guides won't let me read until I've learned from spirit about stuff. All the mm -hmm. Silver Birches and On the Side of Angels are just some of them. And I've been told that I can start reading the Gene Bassett book this week. So, you know. Ah um awesome she she was uh and is a formidable lady from what i know of her um but yeah. obviously you know being being from the same neck of the woods mr Payne um would have would have had some wonderful interactions and i can tell the love um i can tell the love in in neil's words that, that yeah. he has it's funny when you said when, when when you started to have a bit there was a bit of maggie thatcher coming through in the we <laughs> will do something about it and, and you know this is something that i had described to me on numerous occasions about her. um mm. and yes of course you're absolutely right neil um a hundred years yeah. of spiritualism jean also wrote um and you know gordon's army she wrote obviously the book about how Gordon was developed as a medium, sitting, you know, you you probably get done nowadays, um, yeah. sitting with your tied to a chair with your ears covered, your eyes blindfolded. Then somebody yeah. was allowed to come into the room. You would give the message and get no validation or feedback at all until you were done. And mm. and I have I have done a variation of 
um, I have done a variation of, of that without the string and the rope and the blindfold. Um, well, in relation to mediumship, anyway. Uh, yeah. But G um, yeah. Neil says Jean came to Brighton a lot. Absolutely. Oh, right. right. Um, oh, lovely. Lovely. You know, so <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, we should never be afraid to speak the truth. And if we are inspired by those individuals, they have just they have got just as much right to come through to those that they cared deeply about, to those that they knew, to those that they were connected with as anyone else, whether they were known or unknown, they have got every right to come through. And so we should avoid pushing them away. And well okay. done for, for, for having the courage to do that, Karen. I'm proud of you. Um, Thank you. And I'm sure that Jean certainly approves. Um, and, and I'm sure that Neil will have plenty to say about that when you oh, yes. some point. Absolutely. In the <laughs> Good luck Absolutely. with that. Idea. Uh, but no, really, really well done. And, and Neil, I hope you enjoyed that reconnect. Um, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. And of course, we have come to the end of our time together. Us oh. and the oh, SPTV nice. family today. And of course... Yes. We're not on our Wednesday show this week. We're, we're not being allowed to be loose this Wednesday. Um, no. You've got to wait another another week to see us. But, of course, you haven't got long to wait tonight because you've got the wonderful Minty May on at 8.30 tonight. Um, and what are you going to be up to in the next few days, Karen? Well, I'm off to sunny Bogner tomorrow. So um, I'm going down to the South Coast and I'm doing some work um, with uh, Sandra Stevenson runs events in some and pubs and uh, with the British Legion and things like that. So I'm going to be not working in a church. I'm going to be um, going to different events and taking mediumship out to different events. So I'm going to be in sunny Bognor and surrounding areas um, for a few days. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. And um, yes, yeah, so it'll be good. So if you're in sunny Bognor, or surrounding areas, get in touch with me on Facebook, and uh, it's on my Facebook page uh, where I'm going to be, and I'll share it again today where I'm going to be demonstrating. So it'd be lovely if you want to come along and say hello. It really would. So uh, that's what I'm up to. What are you up to? More of what we were talking about for too long at the beginning. So you know, more preparing and decorating. Hopefully, so I can be in the new digs next week. Um, so there'll be can't wait. plenty, can't plenty wait. of of screwing and banging and repairing and fixing and moving, and I'm going to stop digging now um, and say thank you, <laughs> and say thank you, Karen, for a lovely time together, and of course, thank you, Richard. Please, everybody, remember his poll and his post coming. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you everybody for being with us thank you to our wonderful spirit communicators for working with us Absolutely. thank you to Richard for keeping us in check and we will see you again next week so enjoy your week whatever you're doing and just remember if you go onto TikTok or any Facebook or any, any lives or anything like that or book a weeding, look on the directory ask, watch before you book because you know you know, we care about, uh, and so do the spirit world care, about quality within either working on the psychic faculty or within your mediumship. So lots of love and enjoy the rest of your week. Okay. Brilliant. God bless. We'll see you soon. Oh, oh. Sarah, I live in Lincolnshire. I, that's where I live. <laughs> I live just outside of Market Raisin. So I live in Lincolnshire. So connect with me on Facebook, okay? <laughs>